Hello and welcome to another exhilarating session of Rejuvenate brought to you by the Positivity Project. I'm Monisha Sakrani and I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker who I've had the privilege to attend many Access Consciousness classes with. Shannon O'Hara is a potent, powerful, dynamic and provocative access facilitator who excels at empowering people on all areas of life. She's always had a very different perspective and a way of looking at the world that can only widen your view and in inevitably open doors to greater of everything, abundance, love, joy, health, wealth, ease, and anything else that you can think of. So Session with Shannon will create change in your life. I guarantee that. Welcome, Shannon O'Hara. We look forward to rejuvenating in your particular way. Thank you, Monisha, and thank you, Positivity Project. Hello, everybody out there. Nice to meet you on video. Out, everyone seeing this now and everyone who's ever going to watch this in the future, thank you for letting me touch your life. And let's see how dynamically we can transform your consciousness to access unlimited abundance. So this was a topic that was I sort of spitballed and was suggested to me by Sangeeta who invited me to come onto the Positivity Project and as soon as she suggested the topic I was like yes it is my favorite topic. What is unlimited abundance? So unlimited abundance is something that almost nobody believes in, but everybody hopes is possible and that they, if they could somehow access it, it would sort of make all your problems go away. So I am a access consciousness facilitator. My father, Gary Douglas, is the founder, creator, uh, visionary of access. And I have been exposed to the tools of access since around age 12 and then became a committed full-time facilitator of access myself in my early 20s. So it's been about 20 years that I've been facilitating access. And so I've really applied this question to my life a lot, which is where you're gonna really need to start if you want to access unlimited abundance, start healing any and all financial wounds and insanity and actually start accessing, receiving with more ease. If I was an infinite being, what would I choose? What point of view would I have? So essentially where we need to begin this conversation of unlimited abundance is directly addressing this point of view about that you have about yourself. Do you believe that you are an infinite being that has access to infinite energy? Or do you fundamentally believe that you're limited and that there's a lack? Now, this energy and reality of lack is so pervasive in our world. It is a very popular point of view amongst people. And even hearing me call it a point of view might feel like I'm minimizing the severity of it. But essentially, when you, so let's have a debate about lack, because I know that there's going to be a lot of voices in your head and points of view that you have and experiences that you've had that validate, reinforce uh, this lack as a true, real, right and relevant thing. So let's, let's challenge that point of view. And I'd like to start with this question of nature. Does nature have the point of view that it lacks? Does nature tell you it can't afford it? Does nature say, I don't have enough? Does nature function from not enough? Not at all. <laughs> so why is nature always creative? It's like nature can be abused. It can be, you could have like a atomic bomb exploded on it and then eventually it will heal itself. It will grow back. It will reestablish its ecosystem with no effort, with no point of view that it can't. It just does. I was watching, um, oh, some of you guys might, the title, this most recent, or one of David Attenborough's most recent documentaries on Netflix that I took, maybe it's A Life on Earth. And he starts it, 
he starts the documentary in Chernobyl. Whereas, of course, many of you know, there was a nuclear power plant problem uh, some years ago, 40 years ago, 45 years ago. Anyways, it was super interesting to see because Chernobyl has essentially been abandoned, but all of nature has come and grown over all the buildings and reestablished itself. So even these places where there's been like a nuclear disaster, uh, nature continues to grow, to thrive, and to create. So why does nature have access to that, but people don't tend to function from that? So everywhere that you bought into the point of view that you're limited, Shall we destroy and create all that? <laughs> you gotta destroy and create what you've bought, like the points of view that you've taken that aren't true. So, and this thing about destroying and uncreating the points of view that you've taken that aren't true, it's a very, it's less logical than that because we do tend to, for example, it's like, how many of you guys watching this right now know that you like behave like one or both of your parents in some way? Like you can see yourself acting out your parents' point of view. You can even hear their voice in your voice or you know you're sort of like being, behaving like them in some way, whether you like it or not. It's like, so how did that occur? We are born as these sensory organisms that learn. We, we are biologically, literally, genetically designed to learn through observation and duplication. So we duplicate, we demonstrate, we learn, we neurologically pattern based on the input of our experience. And so we learn, for better or worse, from the people that we are connected to the most especially in the very beginning of our lives as infants, toddlers, etc. We lay down a huge amount of neurological patterning at that time that we do not have logical access to as an adult because we didn't think the same way. It's like we were, did your head work, did your universe work in the same way when you were two years old as it does today? Not at all. A two-year-old's two year universe world, the way they experience reality is completely different than the way you process it as an adult. So when I say destroying and uncreating where you bought or bought the point of view that you're limited, I don't just mean the logical stuff that was said out loud to you as a logical adult. I mean the energetical, vibrational stuff that you bought as a reality. Like before you can even understand what your parents were saying, Right? Like you couldn't understand, you didn't know what money was, but you felt this energy, you observed this vibration and then patterned that as your reality without questioning it. So now, <laughs> what I would love for you to do is question all the points of view you bought about how you get stuff how you access, what it takes to have stuff in your life, have money, have freedom, have the things you'd like to choose to have. And everywhere you bought, a, everywhere you bought all the equations that equal what you can and can't have, we destroy and uncreate all that. You have to destroy and uncreate, you can destroy and uncreate your points of view. Did you even know that? It's like you, you don't have to be limited. You choose to be limited. And the statement of you choose also can be this incredibly empowering one, but also this incredibly frustrating one because so many of us think we're choosing to have more money or we think we're choosing to have less limitations or to access unlimited possibility, but it's not showing up in our lives. And so what's also very important to recognize is that exactly what's showing up is exactly what you're choosing. And so to really access, access infinite energy, the infinitely creative, abundant resource of consciousness, step one, 
be brutally honest with yourself about what your points of view, what your belief systems, and what your like energetic attitude is. So if you're fundamentally like resentful or stressed out or like really don't like money, but you still like think you want it and need it, so you like go want to tr you try to go get it. As soon as you get any, you'll get rid of it as quickly as you can because you don't really like having it. It's like money is wrong. So you have to be really honest with yourself like, yeah, okay, like I actually believe money is wrong, which I cannot overemphasize how relevant this awareness is. Like if you have let me state something. If you have trouble with money, it's because you don't like it. Full stop. Like there's not any more complex, <laughs> difficult logic to find around that. If you have, if you're having a money problem, it's because you don't like money, period. So logic would dictate that if you can find out, if you could change the point of view about not liking money, then money would come to you more easily. And this is true. However, what I have noticed over a very long time of facilitating myself to greater consciousness and facilitating thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, to greater consciousness, there is this real resistance towards self-honesty. Because when you're honest with yourself, it's this very potent energy that starts changing everything. So, eh. And then we run into all this like real gridlock around change and like we, th we sort of, now the reason I'm talking about money so much with underneath this sort of banner and topic of unlimited abundance is because most of us don't really have a huge reference point for unlimited abundance is and most of us will convert it and filter it through money. If I had unlimited abundance, that means I'd have unlimited money, which might be true. But how many of you guys want to have unlimited abundance or unlimited money to solve a problem? And as long as money is to solve a problem, that's not unlimited abundance. That's not infinite possibility. That's problem solving. And I need to make this distinction and it needs to be very emphasized because if you are problem solving, you are trying to solve a lie that isn't real in the first place. So, mm -hmm. so if you had no problems, then what? Of course, money can deal with some stuff in life, right? Like, yes, of course, does having money make <laughs> life a lot more comfortable? Yes, <laughs> like a million times, yes. And that's relevant and I don't want to minimize that but I do need to bring in this way in which we disconnect ourselves from accessing the infinite resource the infinite energy of consciousness by believing that we lack that in our being that you fundamentally lack as a being and then you start looking for the external resource or the thing outside of you that will fulfill or make up for that lack that you do not fundamentally be. And as long as that's the energy pattern, as long as that's where you're functioning from, you're always going to be misdirecting energy and never accessing the infinite wealth of consciousness, the infinite energy that nature has access to, which is why it generates and never stops. Where have you stopped being generative? Where have you stopped being in the question? Where have you stopped being you? And whatever point of view that you took or bought or ran into or bought <laughs> that preceded you stopping, will you destroy and uncreate all that?
And if you were an infinite being, what would you choose? And that question of if you were an infinite being, what would you choose is the way of healing. It's the way of reintroducing a new energy. It's the way of changing all of the broken energy patterns. Our consciousness is so amazing and it can destroy universes and it can create so dynamically, so spectacularly that so few of us choose it because it's just so unusual for a person to be conscious. <laughs> However, within your choice, the choice is where you access the infinite resource of consciousness, the infinite possibility. So what choices are you making? that you're not even like acknowledging to yourself that you're making that are leading to the limitation or the lack that you might be experiencing. And I know it can be frustrating to hear this thing about like, just make a different choice. <laughs> you're like, I think I'm choosing to make a different choice, but that's not what's showing up. So let's go again to this thing about like loving or hating money and that being the root of difficulty with money. I will address this with money first and then infinite, <laughs> unlimited abundance second. Because unlimited abundance actually exists above and beyond money. Oh God, I could say so much about that. <sighs> you know how like everyone's like financially obsessed? Either they're like obsessed with not having money or having money or it's all about the money. Everything is measured by money. All success is measured by money. All like your choices are like dictated, determined, preceded by money. It's like, you won't do it unless you have the money or don't have the money or should I do it or shouldn't I do it because this is how much it costs. It's like money's like, the. it seems like money is more important than choice. And you have to remember that like, why? Why does money have all this power? Well, first of all, because you believe it does. Like you give it all that power. It doesn't have any of its own power because it isn't real. Money is a conceptual construct that was first conceptualized and utilized to facilitate easier trade. So in that regard, money's like actually really amazing. Like it makes it a lot easier for us to trade. Like if you have like a bag of lentils and I've got a cow, like how do we trade that? Like we can, like I can give you my cow for those lentils. Like if I really need those lentils, but like then there's this whole thing about the marketplace. So let's say we have like 10 farmers that have a bag of lentils. And, and, they're, and they're willing to trade me a different amount of lentils for my cow, then that creates a marketplace. And instead of having like a direct result or measurement from bag of lentils to cow, or how many bag of lentils equal cow, we have now this intermediary of money. So money was you know, created thousands of years ago and has been used by so many different cultures to facilitate trade and now we put money in the middle of all of our value structures. So, but you have to remember like the, the, the mechanism of money, the system of money has changed and evolved over even many of our lifetimes. It's changed and evolved. Financial mechanisms change. Uh, right now, as I'm filming this for you guys, we are in September, 2021, and we are sort of like at this weird Part. I don't even just know if it's the tail end or if this is the beginning of something else of the whole corona pandemic thing. And what's going on with the money markets in the world is, you know, there's this whole big thing about like the big financial reset. Yeah, well, we, to be honest, we've had a lot of financial resets throughout historically with money. And uh, I mean, there's so many examples I could point to, but I'm not going to because this is more about accessing it for the possibility but I need to create the sort of the transparency of money because we tend to make money into this big monster of a thing that feels insurmountable or unfaceable or so much more powerful than we are. But you have to remember like it isn't, it is a construct and a system utilized by people. It doesn't exist naturally. That's what I want to say. 
Um, so you've got to look at what are the points of view you've bought about money and how can you utilize the construct of money to benefit all. So if you took money out of the equation, what would you do to survive? You'd have to rely on your wits. You'd have to rely on your ability to communicate, to get out, to, to be part of a, either a family that had money or you'd have to do something, right? Like we put all this emphasis on money, but take the money out of the equation, then what do you do to survive? I would hustle. I'd be creating regardless of money because I'm alive. Just like how a bird wakes up in the morning and starts singing and flying. Is it because it has to go to work? <laughs> so for me, looking to nature has been a massive contribution to accessing unlimited abundance and infinite possibility because it is the only real true demonstration of infinite creation without expectation, without, well, I'm only going to grow flowers if you pay me. You know, nature doesn't do that. Like bees aren't, you know, waiting for their bottom line to come in before they know how much honey they're going to produce next year. So people tend to be heavily conditioned towards this quantification, which in my personal opinion, separates you from access. So how do you access infinite possibility? How do you actually access infinite energy? So let us access infinite abundance. <laughs> okay, so here's some practical effective steps to access infinite abundance, but I say these with a lot of hesitance because they're as practical as they are, they're massive. As easy as they might sound at first, if they are applied, will transform everything. And I mean everything. And then to achieve some of them might require like a huge amount of like soul searching. But here we go. You have to ask yourself, if I was being an infinite being, what would I choose? If I was being an infinite being, if I was an infinite being, what would I choose? What would I choose? What would I choose? What would I choose? So everywhere that you want to go into like, I can't do this because I can't afford it, or I can't afford it, or I'm not getting paid enough money, or how do I get more money, or like all that like way of thinking about like how you have things and how you have choice, cut it out, replace it with, if I was an infinite being, what would I choose? Am I functioning as an infinite being right now? And then be really brutally honest with yourself. Now, initially when you ask yourself, like, if I was an infinite being, what would I choose? You might not get any information because it's a question that is so far beyond your scope of like current reality that it's like this far off distant fairy kingdom <laughs> that you've sort of kind of, you kind of are aware of, but it's not very clear. So, you ha but when you keep asking the question, this thing occurs where we form matter through our consciousness or unconsciousness. So what you ask for is actually literally what you create, but it's sometimes, but this is where you have to get really clear on like what you're asking for. Like a lot of us will like be honest with ourselves about what we're asking for on the surface. But when you really go into like, well, truth, what am I really doing? And what's showing up is exactly what you're really choosing. And so when you really go into that, like, okay, so what choices am I making that are leading to this place in the space of limitation or lack or not having enough? You gotta ask like, who does this limitation and lack belong to? You gotta, see if it's a place that you bought rather than a reality that's yours and true for you. So if I was being an infinite being, what would I choose? Number one. Number two, who does this belong to? Who does this financial stress, strain, this sense of limitation or lack, like this place of lack, <laughs> who does this belong to? What if like 99% of the places where you 
experience lack, function from lack, think that you lack, are sure that you lack, what if that's not actually you? What if that's you buying somebody else's point of view and actually functioning from somebody else's point of view? What if you didn't have to have their point of view? What if you could be you? Were you educated, empowered? Were you asked what your reality is? Or were you told what your reality should be? So if you're going to get to unlimited abundance, you're going to have to do it as you. You cannot do it through the filter of somebody else's point of view of limitation and lack. And so the way you get through that is by recognizing, oh, okay, let me say, the way I've gotten through it that I think is the quickest, most effective way to get through it is by recognizing that stuff isn't yours. Like the limitation isn't your problem. But that's not just like a one-time thing. That's like a lifetime commitment to asking who does this belong to because awareness never goes away. We are aware in ways that very few of us recognize and it is we are like psychic sponges and we're picking up on everybody's stuff all the time especially the unspoken stuff and so like for example like oh god it's just easy to pick up on everyone's stuff like really easy like it's actually harder to pretend that you're not aware than it is to be aware of everybody's stuff so who does this belong to becomes like a real cure-all for getting out of the insanity. Because how many of you guys have logicked yourself through stuff? You've tried to apply like the money tools or the the stuff, the, the, the tools that you've been given or that you've learned or that you've sought. Have they worked permanently? So what who does this belong to becomes this hmm free invitation for you not to have to function from other people's points of view. But then comes the third access point for infinite possibility, unlimited abundance, is if you had your reality, what would that be? Now, most of you guys probably can easily reference like the right answer for what your reality would be like, well, I'd have the best what, of what this reality has to offer. I'd have bazillions of dollars in the bank and I'd have all the cars I want and everyone would love me and I'd have a perfect body and my mom would stop being sad and all these, you know, you can think about all these things that are like what you think is, should be your reality. But what is really your reality? And this is where I would so love to live in a world where people were like empowered to be them. I know that we would have such an infinitely diverse and interesting population. It's like all of us really essentially would choose different. We'd be different. The way we express our lives would be different. How we create what we have would be so different. And so it's so important to know what your reality is. However, it is, I believe, a life times journey to fully claim and own what is true for you. However, it is essential to access infinite possibilities because if you, for example, like you're, let's say you're trying to put an ask into place that isn't really that relevant for you, but you like think it should be. Like how many of you guys in your lives function from should? Like so much should. Everything is because you should. That's actually not choice. That's external motivation through judgment, which doesn't actually access infinite possibility. It makes you a slave to judgment. So the way in which we use our consciousness, we question ourselves and that we seek through awareness, through our question, is paramount to accessing infinite possibility. And I know that that is a tall order. It's a big ask. Number one, because it takes consciousness. You have to pay attention. But number two, it's so different. It's so unusual to how everyone else is functioning. I mean, everyone else. So when you access infinite abundance, infinite possibility, 
essentially you're choosing to be really different than everybody else. And is being different comfortable? So how much lack or limitation do you choose in your life? Do you make real and true to like, so that you feel like other people, so that you fit in, so that you look like others? So is giving up infinite possibility worth fitting in? And that's something you genuinely have to ask yourself and really be honest with yourself about. Um, and again, back to that honesty thing. It is impossible to live a lie and to access infinite possibility. <laughs> but when I say live a lie, I don't mean judge yourself more. I don't mean like judge yourself because you're a liar. I mean, like... You can't, it's very difficult to be really honest with yourself if you judge yourself because judgment is again, it's a lie. It's not real, meaning nature doesn't do it. Therefore, it can't be real. So what, what gentle, easy awareness, what truth can you give yourself today? How can you be on more honest with yourself right now? Not by beating yourself up more or by trying to force something into existence, but like be honest. Okay, so truth, ask yourself, truth, what do I really think about money? And then be really honest with yourself about what comes up. You don't need to fix it. You don't have to handle it. It's not like now that you're aware and honest with yourself, you have to like have all the answers and fix it. And it's information. You need that information. Wouldn't it be good to know what's really going on for you? So having that be easy, letting that be okay that you know what's going on for you. So I asked myself this question because my dad gave this question to me about 22 years ago. Do you love or hate money? And at first I lied. I said, well, I want money. You know, it wasn't even like I loved it or hated it. It's like, I just want it. Like, I know I need it. Like, I got to put gas in my car. I want it. And he said, no, you don't like money. And I was like, that's not true. Like, I was like really upset with him. I was like, that's not true. But then I like started looking at it and realizing that every single time I thought about money, I was so resentful. I was so pissed that I had to have money, that it existed. I thought it was like, you know, I thought money sucked. And I was like, oh, that's what he means by hating money. Oh, 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 oh. Then I went back to him and I was like, okay, so now I finally realize, like, yeah, like I really have a lot of negativity towards money. <laughs> and, and I said, what do I do about that? And he said, well, what about if you change that into actually being grateful or appreciating money? And I was like, how can I appreciate money? Because all I had ever seen was money be like the source of incredible stress and strain and upset and divorce ultimately in the household that I grew up in. And so like, and like money and like people like, like the oil companies, like raping the earth for profit and like all this stuff. And I was like, well, but money is, creates so much evil in the world. And he said, does it? What if you could buy up endangered rainforest? And I went, oh. That was the first time I saw that money could be a positive influence. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I never saw it like that. And I realized that it wasn't the money. It's not the money that's the source of evil or abuse or upset. It's the hand that holds the money. So essentially money's the tool for trade. And it's the hand that holds it that determines if that money creates or destroys. And I was like, oh. That's a different way of looking at it. And so he said, yeah, so it's like, what if money could create the kind of world you want to live in? And from that day forward, I was like, okay, so money can be an ally, money can be an asset, and money can be a source of greatness, of consciousness in the universe. So, and I realized I had to change my attitude towards money. And so he said, well, why don't you start duplicating the energy of like having peace with money? And that was like a, this whole new concept to me, peace with money. I was like, you can have that, you know? 
And I started looking around in the world like, well, who has that? And like almost nobody I knew had it. Like, and except there was one, two people, my dad and this other woman named Curry Glassell, who is an old friend of mine, an old family friend, who is the daughter of a Texas oil billionaire. So she grew up in like a whole other universe that I knew nothing about. And she had this other way with money. She did not have a kind, caring, loving childhood, but she had this all, she had so much money in her life. I had never met anybody like that. Um, and she had this, I had this experience where every time I'd go to her house, like I had this weird feeling that I couldn't identify. And eventually I realized it was peace. I was like, oh, this is what money can also contribute to this feeling. I'm like, okay, let me see if I can have that. And so I'd start duplicating this like peace and like gratitude and love of money and it was like so uncomfortable it was so unfamiliar it was so uncomfortable it like almost felt gross and so i would duplicate that f energy because you can't logic yourself into liking money it's energy is always first everything in the universe is made of energy everything comes from energy 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 logic is for computing that's all you can't compute money into existence you actually can't you have to choose it through your being. So I started duplicating this energy of loving money and bit by bit by bit by bit, I changed my pattern, my neurological response to money. And every time I would start thinking about money and I'd start going into like the hate stress response to it, I would catch myself, right? Being conscious, being aware, like, okay, I'm aware of this point of view I'm doing. Who does this belong to? Oh. It's my mom's or, oh, that's, you know, this person's or that person's. Oh, that's everyone else's point of view. Okay, so what's my reality with money? Remember, what's your reality? Oh, I actually have a huge amount of joy with money. And it's true. I have a huge amount of joy with money. When I would think about money, talk about money, spend money, earn money, there was this joy around it but it was so overshadowed by everyone else's insanity around money that I devalued my joy with money because no one else was doing it. Everyone else was like psychotic about money. So I started recognizing that I needed to focus on my reality with money, which was joy. Now, whoever tells you that joy is a valid way of earning money? Nobody, but I just had to like, trust that consciousness worked. <laughs> So I prioritized getting out of that stress response to money and into the joy. And I would like force myself into the joy if I had to, because like, I'd be like, oh, if I spend this amount of money, it's going to create this strain and this stress and this strain. And I went, fuck, that's not the joy. I mean, I need to get into the joy. So I just like focus on the joy, which almost seems like you're being like frivolous. But I've got 22 years of focusing on the money joy and I've become a multimillionaire through the applications of the tools of consciousness and the prioritization of a question, who does this belong to? What is my reality? If I was being an infinite being, what would I choose? Because once you're in the question, there's so much more receiving that's possible. Money is so attached to receiving, receiving bypasses money. So when you receive more, you don't just get more money, you get all of everything, right? Receiving, this is this other thing that I noticed that people do where they only wanna have money or they only wanna have access to unlimited possibility if it's what they've decided is the right version of unlimited possibility. <laughs> Infinite abundance, unlimited. When you access consciousness, you get everything. You get all, more of the good stuff and more of the bad stuff. You get everything because consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. So what are you judging? That's limiting what you can receive. What are you judging that limits what you can 
B. What are you judging that limits what you perceive? And what are you judging that eliminates your knowing? Unlimited abundance comes from infinite perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. You cannot receive more without being more, without knowing more, and without perceiving more. Because perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving is one of the molecular formations of consciousness. So just like all elements have a molecular formation, so does consciousness. Consciousness has elements. One of the elements of consciousness is perceiving. Another one is joy. Another one is being. So when you say you want to get more conscious, what you're actually saying is you're going to be more. You're going to perceive more. You're going to have access to greater awareness. You're not, I think a lot of times people think that consciousness means they're going to get everything they want the way they want it. And that's a self-serving, self-centered version of God. More consciousness means everything becomes more conscious, not just you, because we are oneness. That's not theoretical, that's not conceptual, and that's not logical. That is energetically, literally, literally what's occurring. That's how you're constantly picking up on everybody's stuff all the time, because you are one with everything and everyone all the time. <laughs> So what must you be? To create with greater ease. To have everything that you know is possible. What must you know, perceive, and receive? I was just having a conversation with my husband this morning about money. And we were looking at, we work together, he works with me, and he manages a lot of the money and he, we were looking at the annual income of the company. And I was like, we got the figures all organized and we, I looked at that and I was like, that's like amazing. Like, that's like amazing. And then, I, then my second question was, well, what is the next ask? What's the next sort of financial ask, creative ask? And he said, he, he like tripled the ask, like what it was, he wanted to triple it, nearly quadruple it. And I was like, and it wasn't like a fantasy fairy tale quadruple it. It wasn't like, wouldn't it be nice to have like a bazillion dollars? It wasn't that, it wasn't like disconnected from reality. It was looking at the company, at the current resources, its track record, what it's capable of, what everyone's willing to receive and be, and, just going, could it be this? Yeah, I can. And I said to him, I said, okay, so if we're generating that much annually, compliance is going to go up. Like the demand for compliance is going to go way up. And what I mean by compliance is like bank regulations, taxation, like dealing with all the accountants, da 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 da. Like, because when you get a lot of money, there's a lot of regulation and compliance that goes along with that. And he manages all of the regulation and compliance. And I said to him, are you willing to work that much more? And he looked at it and he went, oh, that's right. So if we, the money goes up that much, compliance is also going to become more demanding. And he said, yeah, I mean, I'll need to hire somebody else. Right, so that's looking at the practicalities of. And I think a lot of times we're missing, a lot of us are missing the, that practical, the practicality of having and achieving unlimited wealth, unlimited money, unlimited abundance in life, it's, we tend to like think that we're like, you know, or no, we don't tend to think. 
I mean, we all tend to think a million different things. Like we've all been taught so many weird ways. But I know that when I first started getting into the, to access consciousness and accessing more consciousness as like a valid choice for life, you know, I would just be like, okay, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. This is my early, early 20s. And I'd say to my dad, like, well, I'm still struggling. Like, I don't know what you're doing. He says, well, what are you doing? And I'm saying like, I'm saying all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory like 50 times a day. And he said, okay, but you might have to actually like go do something. And I was like, oh. And then I was like, okay, well, what do I need to do, right? It was like putting one foot in front of the other foot of actualization not to be misidentified and misapplied as being distracted by doing and being busy all the time as though that is achieving something. Because that's another mistake that many people make, that they, they get so distracted by doing that they're never really choosing. So, What like deeply honest choice can you make just for you today? You don't need to tell anybody. You don't need to justify it or prove it. In fact, don't explain it to anybody. Just for you, just for fun, just to see what's possible. What else is possible? I wonder what else is possible. If I destroyed and created all of the limitations, the points of view, um, the conclusions, the judgments that I've bought, that I've come to in any lifetime, spoken and not spoken, if I destroy and uncreate all that, if I get rid of everything I already believe in, just as an exercise, if you get rid of all of those points of view, and I mean like deep in your core, letting go of what you think is real and true, like having that vulnerability to be open and not in conclusion and not right, but questioning. What gift of space and question can you give yourself today? Being brutally honest with yourself about what your points of view are first and foremost recognizing when stuff doesn't belong to you, when it's just not your point of view, not your problem, not a reality that you have to have. And if you had your reality, if you were truly being an infinite being, how could that show up? What would that be? And how beyond this reality would that make you? Your mission, if you choose to accept it. Good luck, have fun. Do not underestimate the power of your choice. And I mean that choice that you make without any effort, without any force, without any explanation. Your magic, even if you don't believe you are. What's it gonna take to access? The molecules of consciousness. Thank you all so much for your interest in being here and listening and learning. How does it get better than this? <laughs>